There's my microphone. I can hear that. Yes. And your microphone. Stuff, 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 stuff. <laughs> A little bit more light in this room. Hopefully that's better. Yeah, kind of. Just put the shadow in the background. That's weird. Lighting's such a bitch. No, we're not in the right room. Curse you when you're being too specific. Like, I'm both really glad that OBS is specific, but I'm also really annoyed in instances like that that it's really specific. Hi! <laughs> and welcome to another thing of some sort of talk show. Um, I am Tyler. And this is... Where's my arm? Over there. <laughs> there is even. Um, we do a little thing where we go through the Dungeon Dragons Monster Manual. Um, just the printed version. I don't really know if um, D&D if &D Beyond updated their Monster Manual to include extra stuff. But... Um, we go from A to Z, or at least we try to go from A to Z, and um, we talk a little bit about what the current monster is, and then we try to do our best to either replicate or to just kind of do our own little stint on uh, said monster. So last week, or last uh, session, we did the off <laughs> dragons so i did a a lichified blue dragon and you did a shadowfied black dragon black dragon right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so in continuing with that um because it goes c to m we are now in the metallics um we could have easily just said we already did dragon so we can move on but um i i i like the silver dragon <laughs> and um kind of the only other interesting one besides like gold and maybe bronze no yeah maybe bronze um I'll talk about it. Yeah. the other I'll ones have some, some things but i don't know they're like i think everybody finds something that they that's interesting yeah, I mean the yeah, I mean Buddy. the biggest yeah, I mean we'll get into it, but the I I feel like the ultimate gist of it is that the brass, copper and bronze dragon are all super similar whereas the silver and the gold are like super different. <laughs> but yeah. um yeah, anyways. So, um how did you feel about what you like just our uh, pre thoughts. What what um, was it like? Hard? Did you immediately know what you wanted to do? Uh, I had an idea, and I included more of my sketching in my brain, kind of like working as I was doing it. Um, and it, you guys can see it evolve a bit. Um, but then like my uh, I started on like a, a Friday, and I was like drawing it at night, and then eventually I got to a point where my like. Apple Pencil died. And I was like, well, time to go to bed. Uh, and then, like, like, I get up and I go brush my teeth. And I'm, like, getting ready for bed. And I'm like, oh, I could have done it this other way. Hmm. We'll see if I have energy the next day. And so the next day I went after, like, stuff to charge. So, like, and I finished it out. But I was like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I've been juggling some things. So it was like, I could do it again. And I'll probably talk about what changes I would want to make. But... I think, I think we're at that point where like I think there's some great things. I don't know, great, boasty, but there was some good things about this that I liked that would have been lost if I did it again in a different way. Um, but if I did it again in a different way, it would have hit my core idea that I, um, I'll talk about when I start drawing mine. So, All right. and then I am up. So um i th believe i had you go first because i have it slotted in as i'm up first this week but um so on my end i 
like most of the like most of the projects that we've done on this show i sort of left mine till literally the last couple minutes um with just a couple hours at the end for me to like get some sleep uh in the sense that i like every other human in the world have a bunch of other projects on the side that um tend to make me forget that i have this thing that i can just kind of you know that I need to work on on occasion. So where the initial idea is that I'm supposed to work a little bit on Monday, a little bit on Tuesday, maybe take a break on Wednesday, you know, um, I end up just doing it at, I end up starting at like one in the morning and then I finish at like four or five. <laughs> so, and then I hate myself for the rest of the day. Um, but with that said, I was actually really proud of, like what came out of it because um unlike a lot of other things we're just like well i don't really um i don't really know what i want to do specifically with it um there was a concept in my head that i was like that's kind of weird and silly but it's something that i've done before like it's something i've done in game before um <laughs> and let's see in D and D game or yes, like video in game? actual paper, yeah, an actual paper pencil. Um, Exciting. Even though it's not God related, anyways. Um, can't think of. There was something else. Well, whatever. We'll just get into it. So, um, <laughs> the yes. Yeah, so the dragon that I um ended up focusing on was the silver dragon it's the one that interests me the most out of the metallics um in fifth edition uh usually it's a lot more platinum uh this one has a really cool sort of like damascus sort of like color scheme to it um mm. in 3.5 they gave it more of like a less yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like it was less of a webbing and more like it look it just looked like a straight up just mohawk. Um it still kind of had like the big shovel chin. And I don't know, they had I can't remember if the silver was one of those that was like I am able to shape change cuz everything in 3.5 was able to like do magic and shape shift. Yeah. But and that was um, the thing about dragons in 3.5 is that dragons um all of them chromatic metallic uh any kind they were for the most part just big they're like large sized sorcerers like they had their breath they had claws and wings and stuff but really they just had a bunch of sorcerer spells uh and in like, from 4th edition to 5th edition, they started peeling them back and started bringing them back to being monsters um, and giving them less spells and more just abilities that are natural as if they were, like, because it's more bestial instead of, like, I don't know, schooling knowledge base? I, it was kind of weird. But uh, all, the uh, all the metallic dragons, yeah, they still retain their shape-changing ability. I think once they get to an adult version, I think below that they can't change shape. Hmm. Because I, uh, I, I always thought that the copper and I always thought the copper, the brown, it was like one of those other brownish golden ones. Um, I thought they like two of them couldn't do it just because either they didn't have an interest in and they just lost it or they just weren't powerful enough. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's I, kind of what happens with the with the chromatics is that you know the red, the red, the green. I think the black dragon they can they well, with the exception of the other two, the red is always a shape shifter for some reason, but the other two like can sometimes shape shift. Um, whereas the white is not able to shape shift straight up just because it's too primal <laughs> not that it's dumb but just that it's too primal it doesn't care <laughs> um and i thought i always thought that that was kind of a cool like little flavor thing is just that it's you know the red dragon's a lot more 
I guess, regal. So they like to kind of, you know, throw their prestige around and, you know, shapeshift and go into human civilizations and continue to throw their prestige around and stuff like that. Whereas the white drag is just like, mm -hmm. can, can I, can I smash it? I'm going to smash it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think um, the dragon that I focused on this week was uh, the bronze dragon. And that might have been one of the ones that you were thinking about. Because I, I don't know, somebody uh, highlighted, I think in some article, that was like buried deep in there in like the lore of the multi, uh, like multiple versions. Um, a lot about the bronze dragon. And that there is like, I don't think they're primal. But the way that they described it is that they are just like, more concerned with dragon and dragon things and more like prideful in being a dragon than a lot of the other metallic dragons so they can shapeshift they do shapeshift but they're just like they don't want anything to do with humanoids they're like, <laughs> like what i don't know why you guys play with the children like kind of <laughs> dragon. I don't know. It is kind of a weird thing. Like, it, if you could, like, shapeshift and stuff, honestly, like, would you shapeshift to, like, like, how much time would you shapeshift as a dog to hang out with other dogs? Like, <laughs> shapeshift into a dog? Yes. Shapeshift into a dog, like, I don't know, ingrade myself with dog culture and become the alpha? Eh, I'd be over it. Yeah, I guess uh, it would be a lot better to, like, in the gold and silver scenarios, to shapeshift into, like, an ant or something, and then just try to, like, convince the queen to just sort of, like, have her colony stop feeding on your picnic. <laughs> just, like, can, can you, like, can you, like, eat their picnic or something? Like, kind of have a nice lunch over here. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, like, I think some, I don't know, <laughs> some of the dragons are more or less of that kind of just like, no, I'm alpha, regardless of what size I am. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah. This this kingdom, this kingdom's mine now. Um, but yeah, so I took, so I took the silver dragon concept and I looked at that and I was just like, that is a lot of detail. And I've already at 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 this point. It's about like Thursday and I've already kind of consolidated that I'm not going to do a full body. I'm just going to do kind of a bust. Um, because I don't remember what it was. It was the blue dragon. Um, I had a weird issue with the distance from the head to just like the shoulder where the shoulder blades are in the bones. Um so I was just like, I I need a little more practice with like my distancing and my sizing. So I'm just gonna focus on just like the head and maybe a bit of the neck and just like do details in this area. Um, Cause I actually was watching um, some other artists go through their sculpting processes in Blender. And I was like, you know what? I, I really do need to get um, more of my sculpting game like on point. So this might be a good opportunity to practice that um and then i thought well if i'm not going to do a full silver dragon then what else could i do to make it a little more interesting and um up with this shenanigans <clears throat> so uh, what i meant to say by um i did this before in an actual game was I've actually taken a I've taken both a dragonborn but and you know made that into flavor you know flavored that into into a, a dragon direction or another but what I've also done is I've taken with the addition of the more monstery races in three in in fifth edition is I've taken kobolds and I've made and I've sort of angled them away from Tiamat a little bit. Because um, mm -hmm. even though they do tend to be little little chaotic comedic relief, um, it is stated that they can be raised and or um, I, I, 
hesitate to use the word cultivated, but, you know, just sort of civilized into non-cave dwelling little chaos creatures. Um, so <laughs> I had, so I had this one, um, so I, I was going for more, um, cobalt flavor and my head cannon is that, um, just, he just really wants to be a paladin. <laughs> so, uh, but he's not fully aware of like Bahamut. Like he, you know, he's never seen Bahamut. So, you know, I don't understand what that is, but he's heard of description as Bahamut. And what does exist is the Silver Dragon, which looks really similar to those descriptions of Bahamut. So, you know, if one plus one equals two, then that must be the answer. <laughs> um, but at this point, we got to get the correct shapes. So that's kind of the first phase of what I've seen. Um, and I don't know... There's a lot of people that are like, like, that I could just spend hours watching sculpt on Blender, and one of the more satisfying things that I see in their workflow is that they do this thing where um, they turn on, and I keep trying to fiddle with it because every time, the what the it is is the um, different colorations of the different meshes that exist within the scene. Okay, but, so that they separate colors yeah so it's just easier for your eyes to like know where a mesh is in relation to another mesh so that when i in you know so when i'm inflating the cheeks and stuff like how much does it overlap that um that upper mesh um because then i can make it shallower and, and you know basically just dig it inward if i really wanted to for like a divot or something until that upper mesh reappears and it's a lot easier to see, you know, a green sort of disappear into purple or something instead of green disappear into darker green. <laughs> so, But the only problem is that I don't fully understand what my settings are as far as that function goes. So that whenever I start working on something, it just sort of turns into a different shade of green. <laughs> and eventually I get really kind of... Um, disheartened with that and i don't know if i switch it off ever but you'll see me go into wireframe a lot because um i end up working with overlapping with overlapping meshes a lot and so it's easier to see in a 3d space what's happening on the inside of the object when i can just x-ray through all of it and just forget about it <laughs> Um, I was kind of debating on whether or not I should give him a helmet or if I should just have him, um, do the thing, uh, have a mohawk, but, um, I just gave him a mohawk, so I was just like, yeah, that's the easiest way, because I don't I know. Like kind of interesting and weird of this, like... I mean, it's fantasy, so anything can happen, as well as there can be lots of different, like, explanations for how things can end up happening, but, like, what is your, what's your headcanon for this character, and, like, how they manage to grow other, like, bits to their body to have, like, horns and, like, mohawk and, like, things that aren't, like, the standard D&D, &D, uh, uh, um, kobold. If you think that they can't have just already natural varieties. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of one thing that was just, um, that I was just kind of settling into is just the, the idea that, yeah, I mean, why, why, why can't they grow some sort of, uh, um, cute, cuteness, you know, material that kind of resembles hair or <laughs> something? <laughs> um, but. Um, the reason why I was debating on some sort of like a helmet design or something that, you know, has this, you know, Spartan hair sort of thing growing out of it is just because I wanted to go even further. Because like the Silver Dragon has, you know, it's got this big shovel chin and um, all these sort of like little 
the lag tight sort of like sort of stuff along the the chin and the um the gel region area so okay. i was thinking that i could go even further with the helmet idea and have like um sort of like jewelry and stuff so it gets a little bit more like um 300's depiction of what a lot of persians would do with their kind of jewelry mm -hmm. um but it it never got that way and so i just sort of defaulted to just you know what he's just growing some sort of like um some sort of just like chitinous material and it is just flimsy enough like it's strong enough that it's like still in the same realm of reality as like a scale sort of protein but it's floppy and you know it's weak enough that it's not um stable enough to like stay up wholeheartedly mm -hmm. uh <laughs> bit of eye work here it's funny we actually did play a game together where you had a cobalt paladin yeah, uh, I, was... if I remember correctly at least i designed i don't know i think we we did a little bit of back and forth of both like drawing art from that campaign uh and i remember your cobalt being a blue silver white kind of thing were you thinking roughly a same sort of a uh, similar story with that one uh no know, if i remember if i remember correctly that cobalt was a human at one point yeah her background was to hunt down the witch that cursed her because you know in a lot of i i think i made her with the explicit intent of trying to remind both myself and whoever I was playing with that um, curses don't exactly like you, you hear about them and they're kind of like the reason for a campaign to like start, but they never really affect the party and nor do they ever really sort of pop up in the middle of a story. And I, I, I kind of am a little saddened by that, you know, like there should be a lot of things where it's just like, um, like a DM, could like throw this like curveball at your group in the sense that like you know uh it just rolls a die and just one one of your parties turned into like a squirrel or something with one hp and so now you have to go you know you have to try to get to um so now while where you were traveling at a leisurely pace towards this you know big city center now you kind of have to hurry up a little bit because there's all these like other things that kind of want to you know prey upon your little you know your temporary squirrel friend um, and you have to try to, you know, get a, what is it? Res restoration? I guess it would be a greater restore if it was like an act, like a proper curse. But, um, just cause then, you know, you just have all the, the DM could just throw all these, like a combination of like real threats and non threats. So it's just like every once in a while you could just have, um, during downtime or something, you could just have the, um, the squirrel get attacked by like ravens or something, you know, like some animal that you don't really normally have combat with. Now you can throw it in as kind of like this, you know, there's a squirrel there. I want to just <laughs> come back to the Kobo real quick in the sense that I was messing around with textures and colors and stuff. And I came upon this, this uh, bottle finish purple. And I was just like, Oh my god, that's so pretty. Like I just want I I wasn't I wasn't satisfied with that as being the metallic or the silver dragon sort of flavor that I wanted to go with, but I just wanted to stick with it cuz it was just so satisfying to just have for a while. I was just like I'm just going to leave that for a little while before I mess with that any further. Um it's funny that I, I would say it's like my favorite kind of like violet where it's it's mostly black and the violet's just like a sheen that happens. <laughs> yeah, just like that little that little oil splotch sheen. Yeah. Oh, um But yeah, cuz I do I do play around with um silvers and grays and I just hated how monotone it was and I do think that I end up on a darker less shiny version of that previous purple so mm. but that's just because it was a more interesting color to my eye you know like i could have easily just gone with like a metallic just like um 
Chrome or something, but it's just like, I don't really know. Like, so for anyone who doesn't really know, Cobalts tend to range in colors from like dark reds to almost pitch black. Um, and usually taking the root of red into purple into the super darker colors. Um, oh no, sorry. Red, gray, or yeah, red, gray, purple, black. Um, and just sort of, you know, anywhere in between there. Uh, I don't think I've ever read about like, I don't think I've ever read about a green, they might, Although, come, they might come like, in green flavor, but Wolf edition was very green flavor. Right? Oh man. Look at the glam rock on that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened here. So there, this isn't the first time that I've run this, the simulation for the gravity on the hair. But for some reason, during this certain portion, um, the hair just decided to go wherever it wanted for infinite amount of di for, <laughs> for dev distance. So I was like, I okay, <laughs> that has to that has to stop. I don't know what's causing it, but that has to stop. Um, and then I mess around with light because I still don't fully grasp how to light my scene. Um, I like this light ring. That's a cute idea. It 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 works for other people. I think there's one setting that I'm not applying that makes it so that it's just kind of this superficial light. Cuz if you saw, I added it, but it didn't change the lighting in the in the scenario. Um the main light source was still that little orb like up in the upper left or wherever it is in 3D space. Mm -hmm. I like the shape. I am like a little disappointed. Not disappointed. I, I think you did a great job on your sculpting. Like, bravo, man. But like wanting there to be more uh, s like scaly bumps with how how much we're getting to appreciate this, like the the form with it rotating around with the lights. But I do know, All like right, if you well... think about like snakes and stuff, really, you don't see a whole lot, but as it's turning and rotating around, you'll get a couple gl uh, glimmers of where the actual scales are. And we're probably also, gonna talk a bit more about kobolds uh, in the future, um, I guess. Uh, oh, I just slipped out of my head. Do you like in the fifth edition, like new thing of how they made kobolds have like a little, like, I don't know, a different colored dog nose? Um, from what I've seen, that is a, it's just a biological variation. Um, there's other depictions where they don't have that. Um, but I do want to point out that that is a really cool kind of callback to like older depictions and even like not mm -hmm. like D and D adjacent, um, like it's like acknowledging those D and D adjacent um, titles, where they have more hyena like or more dog like kobolds, and okay. I, I always think that that's kind of interesting, because ah. as long as it's not just like the basic like super gobliny <laughs> like depiction of like what a kobold is, because generally when you if you're if you're a super literature nerd, you close your eyes and you hear kobold. Like generally, you you think of, or the the first kind of things that come to my mind when I think historically, is a little tiny gremlin creature that is that could easily be like could easily descriptively be mistaken for like a leprechaun or um. What's the thing that was introduced in um. Volo's Guide to Monsters that was like a little gray thing. It leaves little gross puddles in places. You know what I'm talking about there? No, it's like, I don't. It has like but a... Yeah, like leprechauns, brownies, hobgoblins, goblins, kobolds. They were all uh, like historically, if we're looking at like mythology and stuff, they are just like a a small sprite thingy, kind of. Like, so I guess you're right. And like 
D and D, like they really did start nailing nailing them down and starting pushing them towards being lizardy things, but but it is a nod back to like the original stories. Okay, and then this is what the final render ended up looking like. Look at that nice glossy sheen. So, in this turn in this turnaround, I do want to point out that if you look at the junction where the neck kind of meets that lower jowl um, mesh, you can see that there's a little tiny. And normally, I wouldn't point this out, but I want to. I want to be very. I want to make this like clear that um, there's a little sort of like edge that you can see, like um, it's like a little mm -hmm. jag edge. Um, at this point, the reason for that is because it would be a smoother sort of edge, but I wanted to remove that entirely. So what I did was I took the head and I did what's called a Boolean modifier and I just fused the whole neck bust portion to the upper head. And what I should have done after that was gone into that head mesh and then took my sculpt tool and then smoothed that point out. So there was just one more step that I didn't take. But at this point, I'm already rendering my video and I'm just like, I also need to take a nap. Like, because <laughs> um, I also, because at that same realization, I realized that I didn't um, do the same process with the eyelids and then further smooth um, the edges of the eyelids to the cheek and the upper brow region. So there's still this really harsh, um, difference between what the eyelid mesh is and what the face in what the head is though mm. i sat though for that one i was a little conflicted because technically it's hard to see here but technically the eyelids are a are a legitimate purple whereas the the head the upper head is more of like this dark sort of leathery purple and if I had fused those two together, um, one color would have taken over the other. And I don't know how to stop that yet, but... Oh, no. Wait. Actually, that might be a lie. <laughs> um, but it's a thing to... It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a change, it's a change to consider if you ever do that sort of thing. And then... Um, how about this? Is this any better? I did have a I did have a texture map. Um, the it looks a little janky in in a lot of places. Just because um, if I were to go into wire the wire mode, um, a lot of those aren't perfect little squares or even diamonds. Like they're like really stretched out like rectangles. <laughs> so um, it funny. messes like, with the normal map. It's kind of texture reminds me of like granite more which makes me think of like with how shiny it is this is like a twilight vampire version <laughs> yeah i could have reduced the um the metallicness of it a little more but i kind of wanted know. to get that i kind of wanted oh. to get that like um that like ball boa sort of like snake sheen in there yeah uh, da, 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 da. it's funny because it like this is Awful muscularly. It's got a lot of form, which I think is good because, like, little animals got form and stuff. But, like, knowing the size of a kobold, it reminds me of, like, I don't know. I, I think, like, I'm thinking of, like, a couple of videos that went viral of, like, super buff little children that, like, <laughs> <laughs> could out pull up me at any moment. But, <laughs> I think that, like, that would be, I don't know, such an interesting thing if the world was so fantastical and had these things just, like, I don't know, kobolds and gnomes and halflings that are like amazing buff little weightlifters. They are kind of like if you look at a lot of like a lot of things that Wizards of the Coast puts out. I mean, they're, I wouldn't like because of their size, I wouldn't say they're strong. They're just lean <laughs> like they're. But stat wise, they could be. But I mean, anybody that's seen a like pit bull, you would say that is a buff dog. But that's that's a small animal. Like it at its full height. Like maybe some of them. Some of the breeds are a little bit bigger. But like that can come up to like I don't know my lower nipple. Like yeah. 
Alright, so that's what I ended up producing in about three hours and twenty nine minutes. That's pretty good for three hours. <clears throat> Since you don't tend to do too much like raw sculpting. Um yeah, I just got really tired um one night trying to like search around for like base models to like manipulate and so I was just like, you know, there's there's gonna come a time like I can I can see that wall off in the distance and it's just coming ever closer of that day that I'm just gonna have to sit down there, you know, sit down because it doesn't exist, so I'm just gonna have to make it myself. And <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes, I'm gonna try to be as prepared as I can. It's funny. Something that I'm thinking about when I'm looking at this, getting super nerdy, you guys. Let's let's dig a uh, uh, deep dive on this. <laughs> Is that like the like true dragons live for so long, so long, and then like uh, when they kind of talk about like their different bloodlines, I kind of want to think that like there are different bloodlines, but it's just like. There's probably, it's bloodlines like families. There's probably not even all that many out there to get that much different from each other. And that one dragon, you're like, oh yeah, all red dragons are this. Like, all the red dragons seen in the last couple centuries have been that same dragon. Like, so, <laughs> of course it looks the same. But, like, things like kobolds and uh, dragonborns and stuff, as, like, like lesser, um, or, like, uh, creatures that, like, live lesser, would actually have a lot more time to be able to, like, I don't know, breed and then make another batch and then another batch and then more, like, evolutionary changes would happen. But I'm kind of appreciating how this is, like, a mixture of a black dragon's, like, coloration, the horns of a red dragon, and the scale fringe of a silver dragon. <laughs> like, it's a very multicultural kobold, <laughs> but, like, mixed ethnicity kobold, which I think is kind of neat. And in the same way that, like, I don't know, if you read in, like, a the dragonborns and stuff they're like they do try to point out like yeah their colors of their scales have nothing to do with their temperament have nothing to do with their breath weapon because they're just so mixed nowadays like <laughs> it doesn't mean anything like they're not like true dragons yeah i do, i really like um i really like interacting with the concept that um the of the confused kobold so, um, you know, just that, that kobold that thinks it's, um, that thinks it's like higher class and because it like actually helps run like a small trade store or something in a city, or in this case, you know, it's this, it's this kobold that has all the wrong colorations, but it just super believes that it's a part of this, you know, that it's a part of the silver dragon, you know, clan or something. And so... Which is why, which is the other reason why I was playing around with the idea that the mohawk isn't real. Like it's this thing that he adds every morning to himself, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's just gonna be that one day, you know. That just just gonna be that one horrible day where he just, you know, it's the it's the Joker oh, conundrum. It's it's just gonna be the Joker conundrum, you know. It's just gonna be that one bad day and just everything goes downhill and then suddenly, you know, he's kicking rocks and gonna find like a small magical item and then he becomes Smeagol somewhere <laughs> <laughs> um, but the creature I was trying to think of earlier was a boggle b-o-g-g-l-e okay. a gross little creepy creature um, and it was an oil puddle is what I was trying to think of uh yeah, very folk are strange. <laughs> All right, and so we threw it up before, but um, so also that was probably my closest attempt to getting to a full sort of sort of thing in the sense that I wasn't even going to um, do the whole texturing, like the full texture thing. I was super just gonna let it let him just be this little like this little smooth boy. But um, I found, I remembered that I actually did have a model. And this is why it's good to have just a library of stuff that you don't delete. I did remember that I actually did have a model of... Um, what the fuck is it? A Gila monster or something? Um, and what you can do in Blender is you can actually go in there 
and it's not just a you know a file that you click and drop on a thing. You actually have this whole like node map at the bottom. Like you saw me messing with it a little bit um, during the video, <laughs> but um, so I just all I had to do was figure out what the pattern was and which um, which nodes connected to where, and then I could basically replicate that same texture onto this individual and. I was like, yeah, I mean, the only thing that kind of like when I was in the viewport, I was kind of sad because in the viewport, it looked really good, like because I could zoom in and I can get the angles that I want. But because to present, I'm limited to what the camera sees. Um, the next phase that I should work on is lighting my scene, because what really does the most disservice to this um, turnabout right now is the lighting. Um, they're not in the right position. It's throwing shade on a bunch of different places that shouldn't be. So you can't really see like the bumps in the texture. Like every once in a while, you get that one angle and you can see the, um, the gross little scaly bumps. But that's about it. Um, like the best that the lighting does is it throws that sheen in the main. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's um, a hard thing. Well, like lighting is, I mean that. That's like most of all photography. It's tons of painting. Uh, the reason why you see me like uh, draw with like just those three tones is because lighting is so much to get what you're trying to get, uh, trying to express. So I feel you. Yeah. Um, hey, forefathers, thank you for the follow. Um, all right, and then you ended up doing um the bronze dragon mm -hmm. all right let us jump into that so if there's anything that you've kind of come up with that you wanted to say before oh and the last thing i want to point out is i was really happy with the eyes i was trying to so hard to make them like illuminate which is why at one point they turned like super white it was because i was adding an, an emission to them um but for some reason just making them metallic and then choosing the right like yellows <laughs> just made them really pop in the end so <laughs> sure i was just yeah. like all right happy accident let's just keep it going <laughs> it's creepy and i like it all right and so with that um here we go with even yeah so i think like you you guys can kind of see that I was not so interested in drawing another dragon, like just a dragon. Um, but we talked about this feature that uh, uh, metallic dragons are more or less known for is that they they will uh, so often use magic to shape change into humanoids to like deal with humanoid society that it's just a feature that they still retain in fifth edition, even in their stripped down version. And so I was trying to think of like what kind of sea sailory kind of person would be a good, um, good representation of a like bronze dragon. And I wanted to think about like what would the clothes and stuff be. And as you guys can see, like there was like a couple that had that like I don't know more European like beardy like um, a longshoreman kind of look. And then all of a sudden I was like, you know what? Let's go oceanic with this. We're gonna like represent some more ethnicities out there since i'm kind of from that uh demographic uh and i started like making all these um pan oceanic kind of people and trying to figure out which one seemed like old old world noble powerful enough and so i, I kind of i kicked around a bunch of different ideas i had some ideas where like it's like holding a like a, a really bronzed out um and patinaed bronze that's where you kind of get those green colors and that's kind of why i liked the bronze dragon together is that i don't actually like the bronze color but patinaed bronze that like is that washed out blue green color oh i love so much um and i also i love so many things dealing with the sea so i like the bronze dragon story and that it is more of a sea dragon and uses lightning and all that. But I ended up like trying to show off the power of the bronze dragon, of the like just hauling a shark ashore. 
And like, I think this was my favorite pose that like felt like a, I don't know, that older man kind of that has like that, like the elongated swimmer body and the big broad arms and stuff that like, you know, they could take you, but there's still kind of a bit of a paunch there. Right now he looks like, um, he looks like the, like, he, like he's just like finishing whatever he's doing, but there's like a bunch of like adventures that are coming and just be like, Excuse me, are you, are you, you know, redacted name? We, mm -hmm. we, we need help crossing, we need help crossing the, the, the channel. It's just like, what? <laughs> yeah, I wanted that, like, NPC vibe, as well as, like, that, like, I don't know. I, I think that's, for the most part, how a lot of, a lot of the time you're supposed to interact with metallic dragons is them in disguise as a humanoid that, like, they are there, and you probably don't find out that they are a dragon until a lot later. You just think that they're just really powerful. Or sometimes, I don't know, they comic relief it up because they just enjoy playing pathetic because <laughs> they know that there's so much more. Kind of like play fighting with, like, like with play fighting with puppies and all that. So, and I, I wanted this vibe with its, like, gestures. You saw there was a couple poses that I spent a little bit of time where it had, like, the, the fish up on the shoulder. But there was like a cock and turn to like the or a body or like some twist that seemed more playful. But like I don't know what what I was reading about bronze dragons is that they are so much more prideful and like deal less with humanoids um, than a lot of the other metallic dragons. Like the the copper and brass ones, playful. Like silver, a little bit more, um, a little bit more willing to like hang out with humanoids whereas this i wanted but like like uh excuse me i'm i'm busy right now kind of feel <laughs> like do you have something like do you have an actual question but where i think i kind of failed in this is that i really i enjoyed um I enjoyed going for the very traditional old like a uh, pol uh polynesian Kind of not wearing too much clothes business uh and that left me without a lot of places to sneak in the draconic elements and then i like i wanted to go in with the tattoos and do that but since this was so much more of a scene and body language thing it was too far away from like uh from the body to really show off the tattoos so that that's where i was like thinking like when uh when i took a break and was like brushing my teeth like oh, I really do should have done, like, a close-up where, like, you're just really seeing the bust or you're seeing, like, the back of them and they're, like, just giving you a little bit of a turn and a look and you get to appreciate how the tattoos really are all different representations of seas, storms, and dragons. Yeah, this, but, is, the, this is the Lewis and Clark, like, first impression sketch. Yeah. And then you, you do have a lot of dead space in the upper, like, stage left corner that you could like fill in with like the you know just um like just a fade out or a fade in from like the like the top of you know like his the corner of his neck out to his shoulder and then just kind of start to fade out as you get lower in the torso and then just like yeah, you know sketch right. in a sketch in a tattoo or five i should have i did like the the movement of like moving up and towards the shark and then how he's looking up into that negative space but yeah that could that would have been a good like sketch journal kind of thing of the like the detail shot and like the full scene yeah he really does look like he's like sorry what did you say you gotta yell a little louder <laughs> uh-huh i like i kind of like this idea as i was drawing it and thinking of that like he's really in this whole old world kind of outfit. But I think that would be a lot of dragons that they're like, yes, this is what's fashionable still, right? <laughs> or like, uh, it's, it's been a while, man. We, we, don't, we don't do this so much. Like, are you sure? I don't know. It's, uh, this is the cat's pajamas, I think. Like, <laughs> I feel like that's only among the, the, the chromatics, though. Like, the red dragons are always going to be in fashion, like, at the time. Mm -hmm. In fact, there. In fact, there's probably like three of them that are setting the trends. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like the gold dragon wouldn't 
care. <laughs> like, because they often take the form of an old man for some reason. Like, canonically, they just are always an, either an old man or a young child. So they just don't care ever. They're just like, yes, I... Uh, sleeping clothes. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, then a lot of the other chromatics are just, like, either behind the time, like, way behind the time, like, centuries behind the times, just because they either have not cared for such a long time, or <laughs> I can imagine, like, a few of them just continuing to wear that, that era of clothing just because they liked it. <laughs> They're just like, I don't understand why we ever went in that direction. Like, this was so much cooler, and... Breathe so well, <laughs> yeah. and that's what I was thinking with this pet character. That he's just like a, a little bit more like, nah, this was this is good. <laughs> Say what you will, adventures. Uh, I got my shark, but then like I, I wanted to go in and give it some of those like little like there's something different kind of vibes about it. So the tattoos, I tried to give that patinaed bronze look, and then I'll in a bit you're gonna see me go back in and give some real like shines of like that uh that true bronze color like the golden hints and then like little bits of like clawedness to like the the fingers and uh toes and then like i didn't bother to include eyebrows and i like made it like two pupilless orbs kind of for eyes <laughs> and like the face is like i don't know there's a stoic regalness to it but it's also like we're not close enough to see too many wrinkles, but I would say that there are some wrinkles, but not quite enough wrinkles. Yeah, I was going to say that, like, if if you weren't aiming for, like, well, I mean, if you didn't mean to aim for the, um, like, the journal sketch kind of style, like, how the heck are you going to get in, like, those metallic sheen, like, the hints, like, you know, the clues that there's a metallic sort of thing mm. hiding underneath the, the visage? It's kind of a shame, though. Like, I like the the silver. I'm uh, not the silver. The like the patinaed bronze that's happening, and, and like the little hints of color. Um, but it was quite striking when it was just like nice solid blacks. But eh, I mean, that's that's too much of its own thing. Like, I wanted that fantasy kind of vibe going through here. All right. So um, you probably talked about it just a little bit up oh, and there's the thing i'm gonna assume you're done <laughs> yeah. um so body structure do you feel like um was that are you are you super satisfied with the um like proportion or was that not really like a big like meh. like you know priority it was like meh kind of priority i did want to i was trying to like uh do more of a caricature and i thought just in the same way that like i don't know people are kind of weird shaped in general but i like the idea of it kind of being more of a uh, of the dragon's interpretation of human do so that is fair. Sorry, a lot of things happening. <laughs> so yeah, uh, like I think the body proportions are a little weird. But then I was like thinking about like a, I don't know, a, a, like swimmers and how like if you've known enough like really high class swimmers, they really do start their bodies start changing. They don't use their legs as much. And even if you look at the like the bronze dragon compared to the silver dragon, like its torso is shorter. Its forebody is, like, lar a little bit larger. It has, like, webbing between certain, like, bits in ways. It, it is kind of warped a little by their environment and their preferences. So I kind of wanted to grasp that energy a little bit. But I feel like sometimes when I'm too strict in, like, body proportions, all of a sudden I, I like, start defaulting to, like, uh, I don't know, just scrawny me <laughs> kind of <laughs> thing. So, even though there's still a whole lot of me in this that character. Yeah. 
uh, I bring it up because eventually I'm gonna struggle. You know, I'm gonna start struggling more and more with that. Um, with the proportion concept, uh, I cheated a little bit by doing a bust. So it's like my, you know, proportion isn't like huge <laughs> in a lot of places. Like, sure, I could probably do like a proportion of like the, um, the horns to like the skull shape or, you know, like snout to cranium, but it's not as bad as like head in relation to torso length or something. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was I I'm trying to push myself a little bit more to do different kind of body types um and go for a more of a caricatured version of like people and things. Uh just because like I don't know. I'm not sure that I want to spend as much time getting my realism down so tight that I can then start putting in character on top of that. Like I think we can branch away a little bit closer or a little bit sooner and land still where I want it to be. And that's the other thing too. Um, I guess that's the, the under like the subliminal question in the proportion um, that, especially when you're talking about fantasy things, like how do you gauge proportion? You know, like you have trolls and stuff that have um, a shoulder to, to fingertip length that it's like longer than most other you know portions of their body so how do you mm -hmm. how do you really go for like oh yeah that's in proportion or eh, that's a that's a little too long for their for their body <laughs> yeah and i was kicking around in my head earlier too of this like a uh, humanoid is a broad thing so like i know we like it, it kind of defaults to human and i did it more or less here but i was like thinking like an orc seems to grab it, like if it was like a an orc that would probably show off the, like the power uh that like the that a bronze dragon might want to do but who knows so i was like eh, in an in-between kind of state before i just like let it be what it was going to be and i think for the premise that you set up in the sense that a bronze dragon likes to kind of just be it's its own thing like it is a dragon like if it were to actually utilize its shape change ability i think an orc is a perfectly sensible thing because a lot of them are either outcasted by the general society and or they you know if they're not in their own troop then they are generally kind of on their own already so it's just like all right i can associate with that so let's mm -hmm. uh let's go with, let's go with that <laughs> That's a lot less weird than like a uh, than like a halfling by itself out in the out in the dunes. Yeah. <laughs> Although um, there are a couple moments, and I can see it in my drawing happening right now, like or that like the arm that's closest to us, like the character's left arm, like I moved out a little bit, so there's a better silhouetting that's happening between the body, but it's like. It is just like man that that dislocated and huge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I mean that 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 was my thought was that when you moved it out, I was like Jesus, his his shoulders aren't broad enough already. Like you've you've made him into this hulking figure to like a hulking figure. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean that sort of body shape would definitely be able to drag a fish that size onto land. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. So I wanted the. I was happy with it, but yeah, like when it gets back into it, like, do I see bronze dragon in this? No. A sense of bronze dragon and character of bronze dragon, kind of. And so I was happy with that, but it's just like all part of like art is telling your story without having to like verbally tell your story. Like so, it was it's telling a story. <laughs> All right, and that is it for the metallic dragons. Um, I don't know if there, if we want to do any more variation on dragons proper, but next week is the dragon <laughs> turtle, or at least I want to do the dragon turtle. Um, we could argue yeah. that it's a part of the dragon category, and we can skip it, but I think it's different enough, so. <laughs> <laughs> My show, and I'm going to do it the way I want to. <laughs> <laughs> we have, I have some, like, 
uh, I ran a dragon turtle in my last campaign, so I have some interesting stories and lots of lots of ideas and things that can possibly that I could do in here. So yes. I'm I'm down. Like we'll see. <laughs> All right, now we just have to decide if we want to go cute or if we want to go monster. <laughs> All right, and so with those thoughts, um, thank you for joining in on this episode of Some Sort of Talk Show, and we hope you tune in next time. If you were watching on YouTube, uh, be sure to try to catch us live on Sundays at 2 o'clock p.m., Pacific Standard Time. 